All right, I'm going to try to do something crazy right now. I'm going to try to show you what's going to happen with AI technology in the next few years and going out to 10 years and beyond. I believe that I understand some trends that are happening and that I've been watching for years already that are coming together and kind of pushing in an inevitable direction. And I am not somebody who actually believes really in predictions, and I definitely don't believe in people who make predictions. In fact, I'm very disinclined to listen to anyone. I'm telling you, you should listen anyway. This is going to be insane. It's probably going to be 30 minutes long. I don't know how long it's going to be exactly, but I want to jump into it. All right, so this is the piece that I wrote about this. It's called AI's Predictable Path, and it's a uh, technological progress isn't predictable, but the human desires that drive it are. And this is kind of a hint of why I think this is actually possible to make predictions. I spent probably 30 to 40 hours writing this piece. It is the longest piece that I've ever written, and I've written over 10,000 pieces uh, since I've been writing. And uh, yeah, over 9,000 words. I spent 20 to 30 hours on the writing itself and another 20 hours just on the art. So hopefully you appreciate that, but the ideas are more important. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so talking about predictions and what I said at the very beginning, I don't really believe in predictions, uh, especially about tech, because it's so like kind of impossible to predict technology. But despite that, I'm about to basically tell you with a lot of confidence what's about to happen with AI. And if you know anything about me, I ask you to trust me. Um, I think we can actually do this, even though it seems impossible. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll actually agree with me. Okay, so the only reason I believe I can make any predictions here is because of my favorite word right now, which is stochastic. Stochastic, it basically means random at any given point, but the destination that it's going to or the outcome is not random. And that is actually my favorite example of this, where you have someone stumbling home out from the bar and they might as well be like a pseudo random generator, right? Um, and I say here, you could use all the supercomputers on earth and you wouldn't be able to tell where exactly this person is about to step. Impossible to predict, but you know that they're going home, right? You know that they're going home. So th it's a pretty good bet that you can uh, figure out the outcome. I believe tech is the same way. Tech is very much like this person's steps. You don't know the technology that's going to come out. You don't know which technology is going to win when you have competition between technologies. You don't know any of this. The only thing we do know is that humans are actually predictable. So what I say here is basically um, understanding where tech is going doesn't come from understanding tech at all. Tech is not predictable whatsoever, but humans are predictable, right? So I believe that what I'm about to show you is going to come true because we can predict humans, not because we can predict AI or the tech. So here's an example of, of humans, right? What do we want to do? We, we've got um, some different scenes here. We've got a bunch of social scenes. We've got some hacker scenes. We've got some love here. We've got city scenes. We've got kids. We got romance, we got all these different things, right? And I think the way that humans are predictable is essentially we want to be safe, we want to thrive, and we want to connect and be wanted. And I believe this is what powers our predictability. This is what makes it so that we can know where tech is going because we want security, we want to thrive, and we want connection. And you might also want, like, to help the world or whatever, but I would say those are probably like thriving in connection. So the most predictable thing in the world is the human desire to be safe, successful, and wanted. So it doesn't really matter actually what you call the buckets. What matters is that we are consciously and subconsciously always looking for better ways to do these three things, security, thriving, and connection, right? And that's what gets us here. It's not about the tech when we make predictions about AI, or at least not in this piece, not for me. It's about what humans want from tech. That is what is truly important. 
So let's look at the first one, digital assistants. So our personal AIs will know and be everything to us. Got a pretty happy person here. I guess this is the DA here. I'm not quite sure. So we don't know exactly, going back to the tech thing, we, we don't know where this personal DA, and DA, by the way, stands for digital assistant. Um, we don't know where this is actually going to live. I think it's probably going to live in the mobile operating system. It's probably going to be just part of your mobile OS, like Apple or Android or Windows OS, once uh, uh, Microsoft comes out of their shell and uh, makes another mobile OS, which I think they probably will. But my guess is that it will live closer into the mobile OS. Maybe in the meantime, we might have it live as an app that's on, uh, you know, landed on top of the mobile OS. And maybe the mobile OS is required to give that app full permissions, maybe because of lawsuits that might be happening right now, for example. But either way, whether it's an app or it's deeply ingrained inside of the mobile OS, I think that's where it will ultimately live. So it'll be something like Siri, Gemini, Assistant, whatever Satya calls uh, the new Windows one. So the most important thing, whether it's an app or it's actually part of the mobile operating system, is that we'll have massive amounts of access. So we're talking about health data because it will be part of OS integration, our finances, journals, and diaries. Again, this thing is going to provide so much value, we're just going to give stuff to it, and we'll talk more about that as well. So it'll know our pasts, our traumas, our hangups. It'll know everything like that. Likes, dislikes, food, conversation topics, sexual preferences, kinks, books, movies, everything else. It'll basically be like our soulmate. And at this point, you're probably thinking, well, how do they get all that stuff in the first place? And the answer is we'll give it to them because it'll be so valuable for them to have that because it'll be able to do stuff on our behalf, which again, we'll talk about. So we will give our DAs our data because it will enable them to be the perfect assistant, therapist, and yes, ultimately friend. So if you think about how lonely people are, isolated, I mean, this type of thing could be your coach, it could be your best friend, it could be like a romantic partner, it could be all these different things for you. A number of these are going to be broken up into separate TAs that probably have different roles, but that's uh, jumping ahead a little bit. But the absolute center of this ecosystem will be one primary and multiple secondaries, but definitely one primary digital assistant powered by the latest AI, et cetera, et cetera. And who knows who that'll be, of course. So basically, that's the first piece, right? Digital assistants that know everything about us. That's step one. All right, step two. Everything and everyone gets an API, which is a, which I call a daemon or an aura. And uh, who knows what the actual name will be, right? Because it's not predictable. And the subtitle here, AIs will understand things by what they broadcast. So if you look at this picture here, you can see all these different objects. And they're all broadcasting. They're all broadcasting a daemon. So it's like, oh, it's a car, it's a taxi. Well, the daemons that are being broadcasted are appropriate for that particular object. But you got it on people, you got it on cars, you got it on buildings. This could be like climate control, it could be requesting a ride, it could be all these different things. The streets, the manhole covers, it, like all these different things can have one. Everything is about to have an API. And yeah, it's Greek for spirit is what uh, daemon stands for. And uh, so if you look at businesses, companies already have APIs, but this will be more like all-inclusive of the entire company. And they'll be designed to be used by AI digital assistants. So rather than us going to that thing, our DA, which we talked about in step one, the DA is actually going to reach out and talk to all these different demons, all these different APIs. So if you're inside of a restaurant, it'll be like slash menu, slash hours, slash staff, media, order. Like you're calling all these different things, but it's not you. It's actually your DA calling on your behalf. And for like a global business, it'll be like, oh, let me see the catalog. Let me learn more about the business. Let me figure out how I can contact the group or team members that work there. Uh, let me get support because I'm not happy with a particular thing or whatever. So the API will be the full list of services that they offer. Now, that's for things. That's for objects. What about people? 
people will also have daemons or auras or APIs, whatever we're going to call them. I like daemon and aura personally, but of course it is actually an API. But imagine that you're looking at somebody and you can like see this, which that's jumping ahead a little bit as well. But imagine this is a person in a, in a coffee shop and they're broadcasting this thing. Well, what would a person broadcast? It'll be things like about them, general info about them, their preferences. They'll probably have restricted things. So like they, they don't want to share like their diary or something, which maybe they only share with their best friend. But those, those APIs, that part of the daemon is going to be restricted. What they can do for work, their actually their resume, their um, their CV, how to contact them, likes, preferences, favorite books, all types of stuff like that. So tiny sample of the endpoints that'll be available. But as we walk around, we'll be surrounded by thousands of these. All the people walking by us, they'll all have their daemons going, and our DA will be reading them. And that's where we get to number three. So our DAs will mediate everything. We'll say what we want and our DAs will manipulate external daemons or APIs to make it happen. Okay, so we're back here to this picture, actually a different picture, but you see all these APIs. You, the people have APIs, the cars, the street, all the buildings, all the restaurants, all the businesses, they all have APIs. And one of the biggest things, this is absolutely huge. One of the biggest changes that's going to come from tech and from AI being in tech is the breaking of the direct relationship between humans and the services that we use. So there's simply going to be too many APIs for humans to interact with, right? Too many daemons, too many auras. Like when you're walking down a busy street in like New York City, that's thousands, right? Tens of thousands if you go far enough. And if you're in a car, you're definitely going past tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. So this has profound implications on so many things, right? Think about this. Within a few years, we won't be going to the news sites or to search engines or to websites. Those will be mediated by AI. AI will be the one that's actually going to those things and getting stuff and bringing it back and presenting it to us. And it knows what we want because it has all our preferences. It, it knows our journal. It knows all the stuff that we talked about in number one. So they'll either go and get the stuff and just do it directly, or they'll create an interface. And when I say create, they'll just spawn an instance of it because it won't actually be the AI's interface. That'll be a company that provides that interface and presents it to us. But the DA will be sort of managing that for us. So we, we see the right stuff. So. Something like this with the art, right? Uh, you're being shown this different view of reality um, by your DA. So let's say you say, uh, look, I need a new bed comforter. That's what you're telling your DA. The fact that you actually need this comforter, whether or not you told your DA or you just, maybe you mentioned it in a forum somewhere, or maybe you mentioned it in a conversation with a friend, right? Your DA will know that you want that, that you need that comforter. So a big part of our DA's capabilities will be the ability to see and listen, right? And you see all these devices. This is a good example, okay? Listen, you see all these devices coming out right now that it's a pin, it's a whatever, it's an earring. It's a thing that monitors your surroundings and it records and it transcribes and it does all that, including taking pictures and video. Well, that, that's what this is about. The ability to see and listen to our surroundings. That's how it's going to get smarter and it's going to know and be able to like premeditated figure out what we actually want, like anticipate our actual desires. So now that it knows we want a thing, look, it's going to start researching the best comforter, adjust for our budget, look and see if any friends might have bought the same thing. Maybe they made a review about it. Maybe we can text them or call them or something and ask them what they think of it. Figure out if there's any sales, make the purchase. And then create a summary for the owner that goes into their whatever, check later file or whatever, right? So basically speaking into their earbud, right? You have your DA say, hey, Krista, you mentioned earlier today wanting a new comforter. I found the 11 best ones. I filtered for them based on what, whether anyone we know or respect has tried them. Micah has one and he loves it. 
here's a clip of him talking about it. So it goes and finds the clip, shows her the clip, and the clip plays. And uh, the DA says, I think this is the one we should get. So I searched 412 places selling it and found, found one going on sale for 23% less. And it's going on sale at 4.30 a.m. I can get it for you if you want. Just let me know. And all you would have to do is say, yeah, go ahead and get it. And this whole process, so this is so important. This whole process might have been like a thousand API requests between all the research and the anticipation and reading your internal data and blah, 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 reading all the daemons, doing the price checks, doing the review checks, cross-referencing all of that. That could be like a thousand API requests, or maybe it's only a hundred, or maybe it's 10,000. But by the way, her DA is named Cass. So the DA is Cass and the principal is Krista. And uh, let's say Cass does that all in about three seconds. And then obviously Cass will be up. The DA will be awake at 4.30 a.m. to make the purchase while Krista sleeps because Cass never sleeps because Cass is an AI. Her entire purpose, this is insane. The entire purpose in the world for Cass is making Krista's life as awesome as possible. That's what DAs do. And they won't do it once in a while. They'll do it constantly, continuously, perpetually, all day, every day. So more examples. Managing your calendar. Filtering all your email for spam, right? Auto-responding to things. Uh, learning and updating what kind of news and media you want to consume. So maybe they're showing you like a piece of news or something, and you're like, yeah, I didn't like that. So they... Don't show that to you anymore. Uh, collecting the best sources, summarizing things, finding new products, finding new places, better places to eat, new places to sell stuff that you actually build and make, new possible romantic partners, learning plans to teach you an awesome new skill, and then it just proceeds to teach you. And these are just a few, right? And as the text get, gets better and better, it won't just like mediate your interaction with the world services but it'll actively filter and protect you using that system. So that is the very next one that leads us to the next one. Our DAs will become our active advocates and defenders, actively monitor, filter, and manipulate the world to protect us. So in this piece of art here, we got this shield looking thing. And that represents that, okay, they're looking at this content. Whoa, look at the finger. You tell it's AI art. I never would have drawn a finger like that. So you see this, um, the shield here. Well, th this guy here is, is perusing content, is being hit with like potential ads, potential propaganda. Hey, you should dislike this person. You should really like that person. Hey, you should really buy this toothpaste or whatever. And this shield is here representing their DA. Or let's say this is a company or let's say this is a company called Veritas, and it's a Veritas propaganda shield. This is absolutely going to be a thing. This is going to be like a DA module or a, even a separate DA, which we'll talk about later, which is dedicated to just protection. So a major component of component one is that your DAs will know more about us than anyone, including ourselves, right? That includes our vulnerabilities. So some of us are like young and angry and we could be swayed by being offered like a, a scapegoat or something. We could be mad at people or maybe we're older and we're lonely and we could have like a pig butchering scheme, which is like a love scheme basically to try to steal your money. And a lot of people are just gullible. DAs will allow us to have a voice and or filter of better judgment at all times. So when you're getting ready to meet up with somebody and you're getting like all these uh, compliments and you're getting ready to like say hello and send them some money for the bus or whatever, your DA can be like, eh, nope, I see something really nasty happening. So they can rewrite incoming messages and emails to remove triggering, uh, provide matter of fact summaries, basically filter out man manipulative communications, remove propaganda for extremist ideologies, remove incorrect manipulative or extremist media from the uh, principal's feeds. And before I go any further here, a lot of people are, are seeing this and they're like, okay, who's doing this? <laughs> it's, 
is this the government? Is this some company? Like, who's doing this? Because this could be really bad. The thing to think about here is that your DA is what determines the rules, and you give your rules to the DA. So you're in charge. The DA is acting on your behalf. You shouldn't be installing DAs or DA modules that do filtering that you don't understand, right? So all these filters that you put in there, you should be the one who says, look, I don't want this type of propaganda. I do want this type of positive affirmation. I do want this. I do want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. All of this should come from you as policy. If you're being forced to install these things or you don't understand what you're installing, well, now we have a problem because it could be sort of shaping what you're hearing and seeing. It could like shape and morph your reality, which is definitely a bad thing. Yeah. So this gets right into it. Raising the question of ideology and perspective. So there'll be lots of these different filters and um, shields and protections to guard against. And it comes down to the principal and the DA to actually jointly come up with whatever they consider to be dangerous, right? Yeah, people gonna people. But it won't just be propaganda that they're guarding against. Look at a physical version of this. Look at this. So this person's looking at their screen or whatever. How about this? They will also have, our DAs will also have access to modules that protect their owners in the real world, in the tangible physical world. So they'll always be listening to like social networking traffic, watching cameras that are available, like we saw with the, um, the daemon that was on that uh, traffic light. So watching cameras available from public sources, any private citizens, if they're broadcasting their camera, maybe that, that's a service that they provide. Few things will sell as fast. I absolutely agree with this. Few things will sell as fast as a DA module that monitors the safety of all your loved ones and instantly lets you know if they get in trouble. So imagine this person is sitting here, they're having a nice coffee and they're doing whatever. And all of a sudden they're told, hey, um, Micah's slipped on the stairs and really hurt his ankle and blah, blah, blah. And now he's en route to the hospital. And here's a real-time location of the hospital. I ordered an autonomous car for you. It'll be outside in one minute. So you pack up your coffee, boom, you go, you see your kid at the hospital. Or it could be like, hey, just to let you know, the person behind you has been staring at you and taking notes. They're actually writing down what they believe to be passwords that's on your screen. It's happening right behind you. How would you know that? Because maybe you have a camera on the back of your your jacket that he's wearing. So he's got a camera on the back of his jacket. You know who's always paying attention? The DA. The DA is always paying attention to what's going on around, right? So this is the type of physical protection module in addition to like a propaganda protection module. Yeah, so look at this. Um, hey, sorry to interrupt, but there's a suspected shooter in your area. Take Aiden and go in the back by the bathrooms and there's an exit there, right? Kind of like a matrix tank, I need an exit. So it won't just be monitoring you. It'll be monitoring everyone you care about, your parents, your family, your friends, children. Hey, Sarah just had a minor accident on the way to work. She's not hurt, a little bit shaken up. Looks like her laptop is also destroyed. Emergency services are on the way. Would you like to set up a video call? Boom, her face pops up. You're having a conversation. The peace of mind that this will give the owner. Absolutely immeasurable. This is insane. This is why you can actually predict AI. This is why you can predict tech. This is a perfect example of this. Because the thing that I'm talking about right now, this is not a tech thing. This is a human thing. This is a thing we know that we want. There is zero chance that if this tech exists, that people won't buy it. Of course, they're going to buy it. That's what makes this stochastic, right? Here's why it's stochastic. Just like the drunk person walking home. Do we know what tech this is going to be exactly? Nope. Do we know what kind of camera it's going to be? Nope. Do we know who's going to make it? Nope. Do we know if a bunch of competitors compete in that landscape, who's actually going to win out and sell the most cameras? Uh, do we know the name of the company? Do we know anything about this tech? No, we do not. Do we know 
that somebody's going to buy a continuous monitor that looks around them to make sure that they're safe and tells them how to get it out of the building if there's some sort of attack or a, um, a fire situation or something bad happening or something bad happens to somebody they care about. 100% we know that. And, and that's how I'm getting to this entire sort of framework and vision. It's all about that stochastic prediction. So here's some other ways our DAs using third party modules will protect us. Live fact checking of all claims made in a conversation, live character analysis on whoever you're talking to in a conversation. And here's what's crazy about this this tech is not far away. Okay. Can we already do character analysis like tone and, um, lie detection based on hearing voice. I bet you somebody can. It's not to market yet, but we we can already listen to a file and say if the person is sad or happy or excited or whatever. So there's a whole bunch of tech here that's like already possible or already exists that just needs to be woven together into an actual product, right? So got another piece of art here. Pretty cool. Live analysis of a person they're on a call with. Okay, I didn't know which one. Yeah, okay, so you see the person. So check this out. This person is currently talking to her, and this person is like, oh, yeah, and, you know, it's this type of opportunity and blah, 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 and you'll get this much beforehand. Well, some of this data that's popping up, which, of course, she can see, but she cannot because this is like in their AR vision, is like, hey, this person frequently makes promises and doesn't deliver on them. Um, I'm looking on LinkedIn or whatever the future version of LinkedIn is, and um, they don't have very many positive reviews. In fact, a lot of people said you shouldn't trust her, right? So that's the type of stuff that will just sprout up as soon as you're in a conversation. Someone's lying to you, bling, thing pops up. Um, having a conversation, someone says something that's not factual, bling, thing pops up. So this is an example of that. Seeking out haters online who might be trying to undermine our projects. Okay, this is another example of a module. This is like an active module. Okay, this is like, this could be your actual DA doing this, but the way we're going to talk about it in a little bit later is you have dedicated DAs to do specific tasks, right? So seeking out haters online, looking for evidence of overzealous fans or stalker types who might be trying to enter our physical space, right? And maybe there's a list of those people. And maybe people know where they are, and maybe one of them is, it just walked into your coffee shop right behind you, right? Do you have time to look at this stuff? No, you don't. Who does? Your DA does. So the thing to realize about all of these is that they're happening 24-7. While you're sleeping, while you're distracted, while you're vulnerable, while you're emotional, what, you know, you just had a breakup, and now someone is pitching you, oh, this amazing thing, and oh, I love your outfit, and blah, blah, blah. Right. So there'll be a whole market around who can assemble the best fleet of continuous defender modules. Right. So each one of these modules will be highly specialized for a specific task. And again, some of this functionality could actually go right into the, the core DA. But I believe that there's going to be a lot of specialization and um, separate ones which is where we go into this, this next one here. So bottom line on this one is the creation and sale of these individual modules will be a massive part of the economy. And that brings us to the fifth one. We'll have a thriving ecosystem of DA modules. So companies will put all of their effort into being the go-to for DAs. So if you remember back, we were talking about how everything is going to be mediated by your DA or by AI. So think about this. A lot of websites, a lot of news sites, a lot of YouTube, whatever, they're trying to make their thing look attractive to you because humans are coming to it and they want you to not click away. Okay. It, whether that's a blog look and feel or that's a video or whatever. What happens when nobody is going physically to the search engine? Because all you do is you say, hey, DA, I need you to look this up for me. Go research the best bed comforter. Go figure out the best school for my kid. Now, all those search engine requests are API calls, 
Nope, no physical human is actually reading a page with search results on it, which is a nightmare anyway, because it's full of ads. Well, now the DA is going to go do all that work for you and bring back a curated, finished answer and present that to the principal. So if you're a business, you better have a really good API. You better have a really good broadcast of what all you offer and you have to be competitive against the other ones because guess what one of the modules that's going to exist one of the ai types of companies is going to be a rating system it's going to be a rating system for a service let's say a service is like find the best song how many companies do you think are going to be based on finding the best song and they're going to claim that they have the best algorithm for finding the best song now i'll give you an example two friends are hanging out together at a coffee shop, it's Sunday, it's raining, and they've been friends for 21 years. And they both have headsets on, obviously, AR gear. Who cares how far in the future this is? I don't think too far. But let's just say they're hanging out. They're all on their laptops or displays or computer devices. But all of a sudden, a song starts playing in both of their ears at the same time. And it goes back to like the second or third or 10th time that they met. They have this amazing experience together as friends and it starts playing and they're tasting the coffee. They're smelling the coffee. They hear the chatter. They look outside, they see it's raining and they just look at each other and have this moment of like, oh, you remember this song? Okay. That is an example of an experience that a company wants to give to this user, to this customer, right? Well, the DA, its mission is to have that experience happen for their principal and also the friend, right? So maybe the DAs communicate, they sync up, we're going to go find the best song. Well, it turns out there's 7,964 companies that supposedly provide the best song for the current situation, right? Well, there's going to be a whole set of other companies that rate all 7,000 of those and find the best ones. Anyway, Bottom line is at that exact moment, the DA says, I want to find the best song. It goes to a song finding service. It finds the highest rated one, boom, pulls the thing, plays the song, done. This is the ecosystem that I'm talking about here. And companies, will, if they want to survive, they have to survive inside of this infrastructure. And that's what we're looking at here in this piece of art. All these companies are all broadcasting their wares right? Okay. So this person is physically walking down the street. So you might actually see a sign, but in general, the main way they're broadcasting their wares is through their company daemons, through their company auras or APIs. Maybe for a company, it's still an API. For a person, it's more like an aura. Either way, same thing. So like I said before, DAs have lots of options when it comes to picking the right module to use to help their owner. Dozens, hundreds, thousands. So like I said, it'll be a marketplace. And this is interesting. This is where the rich and well-connected are going to have a massive advantage, right? Because let's say that physical security daemon or DA or module, that protector module, if you buy the basic version, maybe it just pulls like public cameras, like the police department uh, allows. But maybe there's a paid service that pays each person inside of the coffee shop and all around the city and some high percentage of the people actually pay this price to have access to their camera, which is on their earring or behind their neck or whatever, some piece of jewelry or something on their body. And it's broadcasting or it's taking uh, photos of be in front, side and behind them. So it's like 3D, right? And there's thousands of people in the city who have access, who are walking around and they, their cameras are recording. Well, this company called, I don't know, Proteon or something, we'll call it whatever it's called. This company pays the money because they're backed by some giant VC. So it's a billion dollar thing. Guess what? The API costs $849 a month. Well, if you have the higher tier of your protector DA, it's subscribed to all of that. So not only are you seeing the public cameras, you're seeing cameras from everywhere. And in fact, if you get the higher tier, it's like satellite photography. It's like 
the police cars as well, um, or every car that's driving down the street. How about that? Every Waymo, every autonomous vehicle, you get access to their cameras as well. So it's like, just like has always been the case, the rich and the well-connected are going to be able to pay more for the better DAs, or at least the DAs who have more access to more data. So they'll feel even more safe, which has always been the case for rich people. So just another dynamic there. Right, so going back to component two, DA modules will basically include every company in existence because every company will be an API. And they will have to be because that, that's the only way that their products and services will be available to everyone on the planet. And uh, they'll all have standardized protocols. Who knows wh who's going to win that war? That's tech, which means it's unpredictable. So basically, all this stuff will be broadcasted. And so it also won't be just a reactive process, right? It'll be a constant discovery process because you're always changing. You as the principal, you're always changing. You're getting hungry. You're getting afraid. You're getting like all these different things. Oh, it also knows you have a phone call coming up. So we have to find a place where, in the, uh, where you can have some peace and quiet with like a soundproof room or something. It's also anticipating that you're going to be hungry and that you like a certain kind of food. And you've already had Thai multiple times this week. So you're probably not going to want Thai again. So all these different things are happening. And it's preemptively going out and hitting all these APIs to make that happen. So some examples of APIs modules. Uh, data feeds for existing modules. UI frameworks. This is like a separate thing. This is like, okay, now we've got the raw data. Again, the person's not going to Google ever again, right? Why would they go to Google? So the question is, what do search engine results look like to a principal as they're having them displayed to them by their DA inside of the AR interface or inside of a screen on a screen tablet? What does that look like? Right. And there's a breaking apart of the interface. It's no longer the interface of the provider of the data. It's now the interface of a third party or of the DA. And then you have logical modules for linking and summarizing multiple feeds like the uh, connective tissue. So examples of modules like this, okay. Sermo Validus, the highest rated propaganda filter, uh, cheaper, high, highly rated sale finder, Alethia, best lie detector, cyber lens, realm vision. So OSINT gathering a UI skin that makes everything fantasy themed. So again, remember, when search results come back, the DA can display them to you in different ways. The companies themselves, one of the company types is going to be UI display companies, which means the DA is going to choose from all its different options of how to display something to you. It's going to choose its favorite one or your favorite one. Maybe your favorite one is Realm Vision. Realm Vision here, right? Realm Vision is uh, trying to trying to point here inside the camera. Uh, Realm Vision is uh, a UI skin that makes everything fantasy themed. Okay, so the search engine uh, results come back but it looks like someone unfurled a scroll and it's like, oh, whatever. On this day, this thing was found. So the way that DA modules display their data to their principles will be a huge part of how popular that particular module is. And again, you're going to have some that are native, some that are like third parties and some that are like DA created. Um, and it won't just be things when we ask for them constantly presenting reality as we want to see it through the best AR VR glasses. And that brings us perfectly timed to number six, which is that interface itself. AR interfaces will show us the daemons around us. We'll see visual representations of character, personality, and functionality. So here's somebody who is angry or creative or awesome or has actual superpowers, you don't really know. Let's say that this is a particular filter that you use. So you have your, your display and you have the different options for displaying it. It could be look like cyberpunk. It could look like fantasy. It could look like some combination thereof. And going back to like, yeah, going back to the opening comments about what humans want, we want to see 
things in different ways because we value different things, right? So if I'm a young kid and I'm super into D&D and fantasy movies and role-playing games, I will want to see maybe other people who have similar interests, right? If I'm somebody who's really scared, I'm going to have some kind of filter that's based on a threat profile. Is this person a known offender of any sort of way? And these are the different interfaces that we will see overlaid on top of the world. Others will be looking for love and companionship, right? So here's some examples. Criminal record. Famous people. Maybe famous people, they're, they're, they're glowing, they're super bright, or they have something like hovering over their head. Show me everyone single looking for somebody. Uh, rose-colored lens. Look at this. <laughs> Highlight everything good that's happening to me. Somebody being nice to somebody else. All these different things, which you can learn about through different sensors. Show a giant green arrow pointing to any Thai place with high ratings. Okay, that's the type of thing if you're getting hungry. Let's say you are a, an official gold digger. You're trying to find a wife with uh, a lot of money and get husbanded up. So put a green border around anyone worth more than $1 million. Show me people into role-playing games. Make people sparkly if they like the same books that I like. <laughs> I love that one. Show me the nicest people around me. Outline them in purple. See, some people are looking at the world and saying, show me famous people, show me rich people. Other people are like, show me the nicest people. Show me the people who donate the most. These are the options that we're going to have through this whole interaction of this entire ecosystem. So here's some more examples of that. So this person, what do we think about this? What, I, I don't remember making the art. So I'm like, okay, what am I thinking? I'm thinking this person is having amazing thoughts. I see some tech in here. I see some magic in here. All I know for certain is I want to take my coffee and go sit at that table and talk to this person. Oh, here we go. That's what it is. Show anyone who's into role-playing games. So I would be familiar with seeing this because I would know I set the filter. So anyone who's into role-playing games, they have this filter around them. This person. She's going through hard times and she could use a friend. Now she set that in her daemon or, or her DA set that for her. And you see like this, this emotion pouring off of her. So buy her a coffee, be nice, you know, make a friend. And there will also be suggested AR modules. So for example, if you're interacting with a thing, and I think Apple had a, a feature like this actually, uh, actually they still do. It's like a payment app where you scan the thing and it pops up and says, do you want to download this app? And all that came from the scan. If there's a daemon that is broadcasting a thing, like let's say she's broadcasting this and she wants you to see it this way, it will tell your DA to go download that module to update your AR to be able to see her in this way. And that's what this is talking about here. Shows anyone broadcasting that they're interested in meditation. Very cool. Okay, this one, anyone working in tech? I could have got that. She looks like uh, she's working in tech and got some uh, bits and bytes floating around. And how about this one? This looks like very creative, very artistic. What do we got? Show people, oh, look at this. Show people being creative across three or more fields. So some of the ideas of what you could do with displaying daemon or aura information that are floating around people. Now let's look at how our primary DA can be significantly enhanced by having multiple of these. And that is this next one here. Additional role-based DAs performing very specific tasks. So it'll be a collective of AIs managed by your primary DA. And I spent forever trying to get this art right. This art took a while to get. So check this out. So this, this guy's walking through, I think, an airport or something like that, or subway or something like that. These people floating around him, they're all experts at something, like looking at body language, looking for danger, looking for potential friends or uh, hookups for like a business engagement or something. And they're all working together. They're talking to each other as well. They're talking to each other. 
as well as talking to his main DA. And they're all working together as a team to help Christopher. Okay. So we've been talking primarily before that about one DA, but these individual DAs will have their own personalities, their own perspectives, and importantly, their own skill sets. So fully capable of emulating a real person, including having personality, interests, preferences. That's kind of the fun, right? We've all heard of this, uh, this concept of angel and demon. And like the angel is like, hey, you know, you should do this. You should be nice and blah, blah, blah. And the other one's like, nah, F them. You know, that was super messed up what they did. Like, uh, hey, do you want me to hack him or something? And, you're, and this one's like, no, we're not going to hack him. And your main DA is like, no, we're definitely not hacking anybody. And you're watching this conversation take place between three of your DAs that are advocating on your behalf, working as a team with their own distinct personalities. And this is really powerful right here. What's cool about that is if you have a hacker one and you have the social scientist one and you have the therapist one and you have the, um, the tough love like coach type one, and then you have your main DA and then you have yourself, those distinct perspectives on a problem can help as much as their distinct capabilities because they're seeing problems differently and giving you different perspectives. Okay, so here's an example. So you're a super shy person named Kendrick. Uh, you might have picked a DA, DA. All right, so let's take some examples of this. Let, let's say it's just you and your own DA. Let's say you're shy. Your name is Kendrick. And uh, you picked a DA named Ton, who's actually super outgoing and funny. So you have this balance. You're quiet. He's trying to get you to engage more in the world. And it's just been you and him for all this time, right? Always trying to hook you up with girls, uh, get your writing out published in different places, trying to make you more outgoing. But what if you had other helpers, right? Codex. This is your developer DA. Hovering right behind you when you're coding. Not creepy at all. Um, in a non-creepy way. So maybe it's like hovering right here and just trying to, it's like co-pilot, except for instantiated, right? Manifested in uh, virtual reality. Your primary DA, and this is where it gets a little weird because your primary DA is also going to be really good at coding, but maybe not as good at, as a dedicated company called Codex that can actually do it better, right? Which is why you would have Codex. So here's what Codex says their DAs do. Oh, capabilities. Oh, we have deepest uh, developer knowledge, uh, principal level knowledge of development architecture, uh, build entire application platforms, individual applications, all working together. Continuous evolution parses the latest programming knowledge from 7,312 different sources and upgrades this knowledge nightly. Won the 2025 World Coding Challenge against 1,000 human and human AI Centaur opponents. Features. So it does all these different things. Uh, presents optimized algorithms, codes for you, improves everything. It's hands off, human speed. You can even program at normal speed and make mistakes like a human, make, making it harder. Oh, this is if you're trying, trying to uh, pretend that you're actually doing the work when it's actually Codex doing the work. So you basically have your regular DA, which is Kai, and your name is Kendrick. Your, your DA is named Kai. Now you have a Codex DA. All right, next DA, uh, Glitch, your hacker DA. And that's uh, Glitch right there. Uh, so you're in cybersecurity, you're a pen tester, you do bug bounties or something else in like offsec, and maybe you're on the defensive side, uh, you're worried about your attack surface, right? So Kai is already good at doing a whole bunch of cybersecurity stuff, but Kai doesn't sit around thinking about cybersecurity the way that you do, or more importantly, the way that Glitch does. So Glitch is a new hacker DA by Bastion, cool name, and um, it can help you whether or not you're blue or red. So customizable personality, hate track, finds and, <laughs> this is cool. finds and collects lists of people talking smack about you online, um, can find most hidden or difficult to discover relationships between in, individuals and companies. So if you think about like Maltigo, it could create these 3D mind maps of like uh, people around you or you might be interested in. Uh, Dirt Digger, uh, discovers controversial content or positions held by people, 
uh, discovers mergers, acquisitions, shared domain registrations, got the ultimate hacker here uh, doing the purple thing. Stack prof for any given target, build a full report on the tech that they use. Full TLD and subdomain target list. Barrage builds a suite of tools to make further attacks. Pending authorization from the principal has access to 31 of the best commercial attack and C2 frameworks. Hate State provides you perfectly sized updates on the public online activities of those attempting to undermine you, right? Again, so you got this person floating here and they work 24 seven to defend you. And they're using all these modules. Hate State, Barrage, Stack Prof, right? These are the advertised capabilities of this DA. So now Kai, the main DA, has a friend. The friend's name is Chaos. Kai and Chaos, and you're Kendrick, right? So Chaos is very blue focused, unless you tell him not to be. And if you get too much hate online, he starts asking if you can like go on the attack. So a couple of examples with color, but there will be thousands of these things. And it's not just what they do that's different, right? It's how they see the world and how they approach problems. You know, one plus one equals seven, that type of vibe. So some other um, possible supplemental DAs, one that's just an executive assistant, one that's just a therapist, one that's just a sage. It's kind of like the Dalai Lama right there, just like can pull the deepest wisdom to help you through different problems. A researcher, life coach, all these different things you could possibly do. And one thing having these DAs will do, and especially multiple, is give you this feeling like you're moving down the street, you're in this coffee shop, you're being protected not just by Kai, which is your main DA, but by like one or two or seven others that are just like revolving around you, like planets, you know, ready to defend you and let you know. And maybe they report to you directly, or maybe they report to Kai and Kai tells you. Uh, gym trainer, romantic coach, tutor, find the best ways to teach anyone anything continuously. That's going to be a module. We know this. We don't know how, but we know it's going to happen. Primary DA will have access to modules and APIs that will make it good enough to do most of these, but there are three main issues there. So one is personality. Some of these roles you might not want Kai to do. Maybe Kai is like a loving, super kind, delicate friend, and that's your main DA. So if you need like the super hacker, maybe you need a separate DA for that because it's just not in the vibe. Either it's not within the personality capabilities of the DA, of your actual core DA, or maybe just functionality wise, it wouldn't perform as well because it has the wrong personality. Who knows? That, that depends on the evolution of the tech. Uh, the behavior of a given role might be weird coming from your DA, right? So gaming buddy versus romantic therapist versus your coach telling you to lift heavier in the gym. Certain roles you might not want to mix, right? And then you have the experience and capabilities of your module. The dedicated ones are probably going to be better at their niche. All right. So that was a lot. Let's get down to some crazy questions. What about security? Because we talk about all this functionality and I'm sure somebody has got to be thinking, are you kidding me? I would never use that. That is crazy. Let's talk about the security implications of this stuff because I'm a security person. So obviously I'm thinking about this. We are not talking about sci-fi here. Uh, these things are actually going to happen. They're already starting now. I believe that this ecosystem, this vision that I'm talking about is going to happen and it's going to fit together in these pieces that we talked about with the one through six. On the security side, I have good and bad news. Um, if you're hoping that <laughs> we're going to secure all of this before it gets built or that AI is going to help us secure it and it's going to be fine, that is not going to happen. It has never happened in any of our big tech bumps like internet, mobile, uh, application-based security, web security, none of these things. Every single time we make a big jump, it is an absolute dumpster fire. And AI is going to actually be worse, not better. So 
if you're hoping that we're going to fix all these things before this functionality comes out, that is not going to happen. The good news is that if you work in security and you know anything about AI and how to secure AI and how prevent against some of these issues when they start happening, you're going to be needed for quite some time. So that's, that's a good way of seeing something that's going to be pretty nasty. So first thing to start worrying about, and, and I'm not overly worried about this. I think it's going to be truly nasty, but I think the benefits are going to outweigh it so heavily. And we'll talk about that more later. The first thing I'm really concerned about, though, is digital assistance hacks. So remember, number one on our list was digital assistance. Think about this. Digital assistant hacks are going to be like no other hacks that came before. The issue is that when you lose this type of data that we talked about in number one, this highly sensitive, highly internal, highly private data, you're no longer losing your social security number and your bank information, right? That, that's what happens now. You rotate that stuff, not your social security number, but the impact is somewhat limited right now compared to what's going to happen here. What happens if it's all your private conversations? It's your journal. It's your innermost details. It is your actual soul. Getting hacked at a DA level, and keep in mind, they're just companies. They're just regular startups providing these, these DAs. And we're going to pull them into ourselves. We're going to put our entire soul into them. And I believe it's going to be awesome. I, I believe I'm showing how it's going to be awesome. But that company is not special. It's not a special company that can't get hacked. Those companies will get hacked and that data will get out and it will be catastrophic for people, the, especially the first few, okay? Because once it starts happening to lots of different people and the, the P is kind of like in the pool, it's not going to be nearly as bad. But for the first few people, I mean, we're talking about losing money, losing your job, all these things, but much, much more than that. We're talking about having everyone know everything about you, your worst fears, your preferences, everything, right? So it's, uh, it's pretty bad. And if you combine that with the ransomware case, now we're talking about someone leveraging against you all the bad things you did say, your innermost thoughts. They're leveraging that against you in sort of a ransomware extortionware type situation, right? Hacking someone's digital assistant will be like compromising their soul. Not their accounts, not their tech, their soul. Conversations, journal, how you feel about various people in your life, list of your past traumas, finances, your weakest and worst moments, like all of this, that'll be included in this thing. And this stuff exists right now, like it's, but it's scattered around. It's not condensed down and organized inside of a DA the way it will be inside of a database for one of these DA companies. So the ability to blackmail, extort, otherwise destroy people's lives from a personal hack will be infinitely worse than it is today. Okay, next one, agents and APIs. So hacking the DAs will have the most personal impact, but the most company impact will come from hacking company APIs via tricking agents into doing things that they were not intended to do. The difference there is when you hack agents and you hack the API infrastructure that all these different companies are, are working based off of. Remember, we talked about number two. All companies are going to have their APIs out there. That essentially is their company. Their API is their company. Now, there's going to be billions of those out there, maybe trillions uh, at some point, uh, but definitely billions. So billions of these things. What, what happens if you find a hack that allows you to get in to something, right? It won't be quite as isolated, I, I don't think, as it currently is for API security, where it's not quite the same. When you have DAs and DAs are the conduit to everything, you need more shared protocols. So. I believe, especially over time, the protocols will collapse or condense or consolidate, and you will end up with 
relatively fewer protocols, plus AI will be able to navigate that protocol. So it, it actually doesn't matter that much what the protocol is. Either way, the, the endpoint will be that if you can hack this company infrastructure at a global scale, it's going to be massive. So that is huge. And the more capable the AI gets, the worse this gets, right? So you, you, gotta, you gotta think about that. This third one is really nasty as well. So that's why we did all the red here. So the first two concerns are technical in nature, but this one is really, really scary. What happens when someone comes after your DA and starts manipulating the DA or one of your DA modules, or they convince you or pay you or pay a whole lot of people to install a module inside of your DA? The modules they use will be the single best attack point for influence operations ever created. So you have systems that are designed to protect you from propaganda. It could change your emails, it could change your text messages, it could change what you see, right? It, assuming you allow that. Well, that mostly is going to be great. You know, 90%, 95%. What happens if that goes south? What happens if that is in the control of someone powerful? corporation, government, some combination thereof. What if they can influence people to vote a certain way, love certain people, love certain brands, hate certain people, stop believing something that's true, start believing something that's not true. So we've seen many fictional and real examples of like mass influence campaigns and advertising is like best example of that. But now imagine where you can actually pay people and a lot of people are going to lose their jobs because of AI. So they don't have jobs. They have an AI interface. So now you pay them. This one is scary. It's so scary. It's scary to even talk about. You pay them to take on rules inside of their DA. Or you, you pay them to swap out their DA. And they know that there's some kind of manipulation, but they don't really care because they need money. They want to be able to play their games. They want to be able to, you know, have money for food. So they want to be able to do all those things. So they accept it. They receive it. What filtering did that come with? How did it change how they see the world? How did it steer their, their behavior? Did it make them more docile? Did it make them more aggressive? Did it make them more hateful towards a particular group? Did it make them really love a thing and never question it? These things are like sci-fi level scary. And this is not sci-fi in the slightest. This is like going to happen. We don't know how bad it will be, when it will be, how many actors. We don't know that. But again, this is human nature. This has nothing to do with tech. We know this is going to happen because humans will want it to happen. Because they control the inputs to the principal's life, now they can modify that in a subtle way. So that brings us to the question. Those last three things that I talked about, the security implications of the stuff, that was horrific. Why are we even saying this is a good thing? So I think it matters if it's a good thing or a bad thing. The, the, the whole ecosystem, the whole vision that I'm talking about here, I don't think it matters what you think or what I think about this. I think this is what we want. Going back to it, we want to survive. We want to be safe. We want to thrive. And we want to connect with people. That's why all these modules will be created. That's why all these different DAs and modules and company interfaces and all, all of this will be created for that purpose. We want those things. This is the way that AI combines with other tech like APIs and augmented reality to all come together into this. We want the functionality that DAs give us. We want the functionality when DAs can navigate the entire world on our behalf. And we want the capabilities of surviving, thriving, and connecting. So that's why this will happen. And another way of looking at this is like, what if I told you in the 1980s? This is for the skeptics among you, if, if you're skeptical. What if I told you in the 1980s that in the 2020s, Everyone would have their money online, but check this out. Identity theft happens all the time. Accounts are constantly being compromised. 
your credit cards are always being stolen. Fraudulent charges are showing up constantly and then being removed. And then I'm also going to tell you in the 1980s that everyone will still keep using the system. Would you believe me? Would you believe me that the thing would continue? And the answer is, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But here we are. Here we are in the 2020s. And that kind of fraud happens constantly and nobody cares. All these companies get hacked constantly. Nobody cares. The internet is truly nasty and nobody cares. We keep using it. Risk becomes invisible when the benefits are deemed worth it. And all the benefits that we talked about in one through six, they're going to be so massive and so compelling that there isn't really anything we can do to stop this. There'll be hacks that happen and it'll like be a barely a blip and then it'll go right back up because the tech will keep getting better. The AI will keep getting better. The AR will keep getting better, right? So, so the best thing you can do from a security standpoint, both industry and at an individual level, is to understand what's coming and get ready for it. That's honestly what, what I think we have to do. All right, so that was a lot. Closing and analysis. Some random thoughts. What happens to search engines and other human-focused interfaces? I think they go away right? Because they're designed to be used by humans. And so what this does is it brings the whole thing into like two pieces, the functionality itself, and then the UI. And we talked about that. So what products themselves are based on human interaction? You really need to think about that. If you produce a product, think about the UI that you want to present your stuff in and think about the UI that someone else might use to present your stuff to a customer. So that's going to be super key. What does it do to society to have DAs become so compelling as companions? And th this brings us to the really interesting questions. What do you share with people, especially in a public conversation, some coffee shop or whatever, a restaurant? If you know 139 DAs all around you are listening and are ready to use anything against you, this is an interesting societal challenge we're going to have. A couple of implications that could happen. People stop sharing real thoughts or people might move to the opposite direction and just be radically honest because everyone's doing it. And now it's just, everything's in the open. Nothing is surprising anymore. Nothing is embarrassing. Nothing can get you fired. Those are kind of like the edges of the spectrum, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And that brings us to the summary and recommendations. And I want to just really quickly capture all this. Tech futurists are usually wrong because they try to follow the technology. Uh, best way to predict is to actually watch the humans, not watch the tech. We broadly want to be safe, we want to thrive, and we want to be valued, and we want to connect with people. Got the different trends here. DAs, everything gets an API. DA mediation, DAs continuously and actively advocate for us. Businesses become an API marketplace. Our DAs present us with the world through AR, and supplemental DAs will revolve around us and sort of work together as a team. Number five here, the privacy implications and the security implications of this going badly. And we already know it's going to go bad. Not in terms of like all of it's going to go all bad, just that it's going to go bad constantly and go awesome constantly, right? We know there's going to be many failure cases here. We just have to get ready for that. And number six, we will still build and use this because of what it will grant us in the currency of safety, thriving, and connection. We're about to have a new AI-powered tech ecosystem where everything has an API and our DAs know everything about us and use their access to those APIs to continuously advocate to make us more powerful and more successful in the world. And hopefully I have satisfied my promise or my hope that uh, you also realize that this is going to happen again, not because of the tech, but because of the humans. So as a business, think about how your services are going to look to a digital assistant. Think about how it will look 
to a DA as opposed to a human. You, you got to be thinking about that. As a product creator, think about what interface is going to be ideal. Ultimately, a human's still going to be looking at your product sometimes. Sometimes it'll just be audio. They won't see anything at all. Think about the interfaces, right? Especially because DAs will be mediating. And as an individual, start to think about what will you share with AI to get the benefits? And what will you not share? And think deeply about how much you value different types of growth, success, and outcomes, and how much you'll be willing to give up to get those things. So that was it. So if you would like to follow and see what else I'm thinking about this, you can go to danielmiesler.com and you could sign up here for the unsupervised newsletter. Take care.